It's Friday, September 25th, 2015, and let's talk about what happened this week over at xdadevelopers.com. Before I get started, I just wanted to mention I've teamed up with TK from XDA as well as several other YouTubers and we're doing a giveaway. You can find a link down in the video description to get more information, but we're going to be giving away three phones and two media players, so you should definitely check that out. Anyway, lots to talk about, so let's get to it. First up, according to a software update schedule from Canadian wireless carrier Telus, they believe Android 6.0 Marshmallow is going to start rolling out on October 5th, which is just over a week from now. Obviously that is not anything official, it didn't come straight from Google, but still, nice to know that it might happen sooner than we'd hoped. Meizu unveiled their newest device, the Pro 5, which has a 5.7 inch 1080p display, USB Type-C, and either 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage for about 440 US dollars, or 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage for about 485 US dollars. Xiaomi launched their Mi 4C with a Snapdragon 808 processor, 5 inch 1080p display, USB Type-C, and a 3080 mAh battery starting at just 205 US dollars for a 2 gigabyte model and 235 US dollars for a 3 gigabyte model. LG announced their Class smartphone with a 5 inch 1080p display, Snapdragon 410 chip, 2 gigs of RAM, and a 2050 milliamp hour battery, but a 13 megapixel rear facing and 8 megapixel front facing camera for about the equivalent of 335 US dollars. That one's a little bit confusing. Sounds kind of like the LG Leon that I've been testing, but with a better camera and screen. They've also announced the LG G-Pad 2 10.1, but it's only available in South Korea for now. It's got the Snapdragon 800. 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and a 7400 milliamp hour battery, and it's going to be releasing in the US before the end of September. Very interesting one there. Omate announced a new smartwatch, the True Smart Plus, which runs a full version of Android 5.1 Lollipop out of the box, comes with a SIM card slot, a 1.54 inch 320x320 display, a MediaTek MT6572 chip, 1 gig of RAM and 8 gigs of storage, with a 700 milliamp hour battery, all for just 169. I've heard mixed opinions about the first generation Omate watch, especially when it comes to development for it. But if you like that one, this one might be interesting. Google is continuing to expand their Android One project, this time to Spain and Portugal with the BQ Aquarius A4.5, and into the UAE with the Infinix Hot 2. So be on the lookout for that if you're in either of those locations. In some good news, OnePlus has started rolling out OxygenOS version 2.1.0 to the OnePlus 2 over the air. The biggest thing that they talked about in this update is they've added in manual mode to the camera, which I have been missing out on ever since I swapped over to it from the LG G4. I've been mashing that update now button ever since I read about the update, but unfortunately, no update for me yet. Speaking of the OnePlus 2 though, there is now an official build of twerp for it, which should be handy. Heisenberg put out a guide showing you how to unlock, root, and flash custom ROMs to the Moto X style or pure. XDA senior member Squid2 released an unofficial build of CM12.1 for the Moto X Play, with the only real issues affecting the GPS. And speaking of the Moto X, Motorola has made it very clear now that the 2015 Moto X Pure Edition is not intended to be a developer device, so if you unlock the bootloader on it, it's going to void your warranty. They say that if there's some sort of a physical issue, like the, the volume rocker or something, that's clearly not related to it being unlocked, they're still going to cover that, but otherwise your warranty will be null and void, so keep that in mind if you're thinking of picking that device up, wanting to use it for development. But speaking of bootloaders, an engineering bootloader for the European Galaxy S6 G920F has been made available by XDA senior member Ultra Gamer HD. Previous bootloaders like this have made it possible to root the Galaxy S6 without actually tripping off Nox, so if you've got that device and you want to root it, you might want to check out this thread. The Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 has received a port of AOSP 5.0.2, and while there are some bugs in it, it might be worth taking a look at it if you'd like some stock Android on that device. XDA recognized contributor Dr. Ketan put out an easy to follow guide showing you how to root the Note 5. XDA member Slow Sunset put out a guide going through the bootloader unlocking process for the Meizu MX4 and the Meizu M1 Note. CyanogenMod has announced they're adding support for a bunch of new, mostly mid-range devices, so head on over to their site to see if your device has been added, or, or not, if you'd like it. And in some XDA-specific news, starting this week, XDA has teamed up with the Android subreddit to put out a podcast. 
That's going to be available here on XDA TV as well as a bunch of other places. So if you'd like to check that out, links down below. It was also announced that XDA is going to be sponsoring the big Android barbecue again. And I believe that TK is going to be headed there on behalf of XDA TV. So be on the lookout for him. And a ton of new forums were added. And honestly, I'm not going to read all of them off. But just to hit some high points, the Nexus 5X and 6P several different Samsung devices, the Xiaomi Mi 4C, and all the new Amazon tablets all have forums available. And in addition to the podcast video I mentioned earlier, I did a video reviewing a speaker from MPOW and announcing a giveaway for five of those. So you should go ahead and check out that video if you're interested in winning a Bluetooth speaker. But you know what? That's going to be about all from me for today. You can find the links to all the stories that I talked about down in the video description, as usual, as well as the links to my YouTube channels. Remember, if you like this video, please do leave us a thumbs up down below the video. We definitely appreciate it. And subscribe to receive all of our videos as soon as they become available. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.